Well, what's on tonight and tomorrow night is biography of my skin uh, at the James Hay. And so we're thrilled that Miranda Harcourt has popped in to have a chat with us about this. Miranda, thank you so much for joining us today. I know it's been a busy tour for you, but wrapping up in Christchurch this weekend. Yeah, this is we're doing our two final shows of the tour in Christchurch tonight, Friday and tomorrow, Saturday at the James Hay. Brilliant. So biography of my skin literally is biography of your skin? Well, kind of. I'd say it's more a biography of the audience's skin, really, because mm. it's um, it's a solo show and it's about growing up and going, going through the 70s, 80s, 90s, the last 40 years of um, social history in New Zealand. It's hilariously funny and um, it's kind of really the st a story we've all been through. Mm -hmm. So, um, so the, what we find is the audience sits out there and they go, oh yes, what's this going to be? And then they go, oh, it's about my experiences. And then they laugh like drains until the end. Brilliant. So yeah, we've, we've just played two sellout seasons at the, um, two sellout um, performances at the Nelson Festival. And, um, and it was honestly like surfing because with these huge waves of laughter coming off the audience and it was just a great <laughs> joy to sort of um, surf with that, um, that fantastic response. It's done extremely well. Uh, you've picked up awards from it as well. I mean, it started at, um, in Downstage Theatre last year, is that yep. right? Yep, good old Downstage Theatre, um, which Wellington. is the court mm. theatre of Wellington. Mm. They commissioned it. And um, we did two seasons there. We came back by popular demand, and then um, and lovely Creative New Zealand gave us some um, funding to take it on a nine-centre tour through the country with our three children, which it was yeah, insanity. It <laughs> it's all right. I mean, they're loving it. They're having a great time, and they've um, learned a lot about our country and a lot about um, geography and a lot about um, really being able to locate where is what in New Zealand. Mm. So I'm very pleased that we um, that we took them with us because it's been a great education for them. They've done lots of maths and English homework along the way. And, um, and then next week, when they go back to school on Tuesday morning, it'll be a great relief for all of us. <laughs> because, of course, Miranda, your husband, uh, Stuart, wrote Biography of My Skin, didn't he? Yeah. So it really is a, you know, a family affair. You've yeah. worked a lot with Stuart, though, haven't you, over the years? Yes, we do a lot of work together. Mm. And interestingly, he is from Christchurch, and I spent a lot of time in Christchurch. We met in Christchurch, and a lot of our story is about Christchurch. And... Um, uh, a lot of the play is about Christchurch and things that happen in Christchurch and Christchurch people. Lisa Densom, who's from a very well-known performing arts family here, the Densom family, she's in the play. And um, Stuart's brother, Alistair, who's a driving instructor here in Christchurch, he's in the play. There's a huge screen behind me and it's a solo show with a cast of about 15 or 20 because people visit the show oh. via this, solo, this, um, this screen and I have many conversations. So, um, so it really is a very Christchurch show and I'm both Stuart and I are very pleased to be bringing it home to um, to the audience that really um, owns it in the first place. It's brilliant, isn't it? And of course, your mother was born in North Canterbury too, wasn't she? Yes, she so was. We went through Okuku Pass. We just drove. We drove from um, Nelson to Omaru and then here, and um, we drove through Okuku Pass where my mother was born and Amberley and all these you know names. Which I mean, it's like that wonderful play by Gary Henderson, Skin Type, which is about mm. Fairley. And, mm. and as you drive through that area, the names just roll they r roll through and you're like oh this is like driving through fiction it's so beautiful is there any kind of part of the play that's a little bit nerve-wracking for you to perform on stage just kind of given the nature of it or a little bit personal y uh, yeah the whole thing <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's uh, it's a big um i mean there's, there's a couple of points that i really look forward to because they uh, i know the audience just goes i can't believe it <laughs> what is going on and then and they they love it it's the, and there are a couple of points of huge comedy which are very rewarding to look forward to and um, and then there's a um, yeah there are some bits that are harder to perform than others but really it's just a damn good time mm -hmm. and it's a damn good time for me as well as for the audience so we all I start the show and we all just have a great time together I mean honestly I've, I'm 47 years old and um, I know I don't look at it. No, you don't. But, um, <laughs> but I've, been, I've been acting since I was two. I did my first professional job when I was two years old. So that's a 42, is that, hang on, how does that go? 45-year-old. Mm, mm. I've got a 45-year-old career. And this is the, my favourite, all-time favourite performing experience. I've never had such a good time in concert with the audience. It's just... Um, it's like a party. Is that because in part that you are playing yourself? Like is that an easy or hard role to play yourself? Oh, it, well, you would think it was easier yeah. but it's actually hard because the, the director Tim Spite, um, you have to kind of be, you, you can't just be yourself. You've mm. got to be elements mm. of yourself which are particular and it's, it's almost easier to look at somebody else and go I'm going to play like um, David McVale does, I'm going to play um, Muldoon and you can look at that person and select the bits that you're going to play. 
But when you're playing yourself, you don't really have that objectivity, so you That's have right. to rely on the director. You've had an incredible career, as you just mentioned, and we've seen you from you know, such a young age, and we'll all remember Gemma and Gloss and kind of right through that era too. But you've been doing some amazing things recently with your acting coaching that have taken you overseas as well. So yeah. tell us a little bit about that. That's great. Well, um, I, I'm, a, I'm a passionate teacher, and I always have been. And so I've translated. I was the head of acting at the National Drama School for mm. seven years. And then when I left there, the day before I gave birth to my three-year-old, who's now three and a half, um, I... It sounds like I gave birth to her at the age of three, but no, she was, <laughs> I gave birth to her. She was only a baby, and now she's three and a half. And, um, and in that three and a half years, I've gone out on my own as, a, um, I guess, what you would call in the business world a consultant, but I'm an acting consultant. Mm -hmm. So I do lots of corporate work, but I also work um, internationally with young actors, or old actors for that matter. I um, acting coached on Kaitangata Twitch. Yes. It was filmed in Banks Peninsula last year. And, and I coached um, an older Māori lady in that who was in her 60s. So I coach uh, people of any age. But most recently I've been in Hawaii working on a film starring Helen Hunt and Dennis Quaid. And I coached, I went there to coach Anna Sophia Robb, who if you've seen um, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory with Johnny, Johnny Depp, mm -hmm. she plays Violet Beauregard, the little blonde girl. Yes, gorgeous. Or if you've seen Bridge to Terabithia, Mm -hmm. which is uh, anyone with kids of my, my kids age would have seen Bridget Terabithia. It's a, an instant children's classic and I coached Anna Sophia in her lead role in that film. And so I went back, this is four years after we did Bridget Terabithia, to Hawaii to coach her. And of course when the other young actresses saw that she had someone who was dedicated to helping her, they went, ooh, ooh, we need her as well. Brilliant. So, um, so I, I coached uh, Lorraine Nicholson, who's Jack Nicholson's daughter, who was a lovely girl, and um, Carrie Underwood who won American, American Idol, Idol in 2005, and she's a huge star yeah. in America. But I had never heard of her, so it wasn't stressful. <laughs> it seemed peculiar that she was the only person who had three security guards, but, um, but yeah, she was a lovely girl. So she's too. obviously getting into a bit of acting now as well. Yeah, she was very good. Oh. I think she was quite surprised by it all, because acting's very different from singing. Yeah, she's completely like, different from singing. Can you just um, tell us a little bit about, um, of course, we're in, inundated at the moment with news on The Hobbit and, and the dramas that have been happening there. Can you just enlighten us a little bit about what has actually happened there, just so we can kind of try and understand it as much as you can? <laughs> well, it's hard for me because I've been away from my acting family mm. and my friends and associates in Wellington and Auckland for six weeks around the country and so I haven't been up against it. I haven't had the conversations mm. late at night in theatre bars that, um, that yeah, most actors have about, had. Yeah. So I, I'm by no means an expert but it seems to me that, um, that the union are putting forward some requests to the industry at large Right. and unfortunately f for the union and unfortunately for The Hobbit um, it, the timing has been that it's the Hobbit that had its neck sticking out mm. at the moment where those requests um, were put forward. Now maybe that is, there was some um, politics at work in the timing there, I don't know, but it seems very unfortunate that it was the Hobbit that, um, uh, that was in the firing line and I think that everyone would agree, especially on the Hobbit side, everyone would agree with that. Mm. So um, I, I think the union needs to make its uh, claims or demands clearer Okay. Because I don't think anybody, I don't know, and I don't think anybody seems to know exactly what it is that the union is asking for um, in terms of a, um, what they're saying is a fair deal in terms of actors. Mm, okay. But I, I know from personal experience, having worked with Peter Jackson, I coached on The Lovely Bones yeah. and I worked with him on several occasions and he is an extremely fair, generous employer absolutely scrupulously um, fair and, um, and of course passionate about New Zealanders. Mm. So he'll be wanting to keep it here as much as he can? Well, well of course he will because mm. he lives here, his, you know, his family's here and why wouldn't he want to keep mm. it here? And mm. he's passionate about New Zealand so um, you know, I, I feel for everyone but I really feel for Peter because I think that he's, um, I, I really think that he's having a very hard time and, um, and we all rely on him that's to keep right. the Hobbit here. That's exactly right. So we'll keep our fingers crossed for the next couple of days with news on that. Miranda Harcourt, thank you so much. It's been a real pleasure to Come meet you. Come to the show, Friday, Saturday, Absolutely. 7.30 at the James Hay. Make sure you book your tickets. You do not want to miss out on this experience. It's fantastic. It's Biography of My Skin uh, ends this weekend tonight and tomorrow night. So uh, make sure you do book your tickets at Ticket Tech as well. And we have a couple to give away. Thank you very much for those, Miranda. So to win your double pass to Biography of My Skin, try your luck now. 033 We are looking for callers number four and five. You do not want to miss out on this one. It is a fabulous production.